new to the street, does welcome today Chris Cleverly, the CEO of Campay, who will talk about the company's ecosystem, its token, how it's growing, and how it's changing Africa's economy for the good. So Chris, welcome. Um, great to have you here. Um, I, I loved reading about the company and all the potential um, that blockchain and tokenization has. So just get, give us an update on what Campay is doing. Well, I, I, look, it's exciting to be here. So, uh, you know, it's great to be able to get the voice over from Africa um, and bring it out to the globe. And it's great that you're taking interest in, in what's happening on the ground out there. Um, our purpose with Campe has always been about creating a ground up solution. So often you get people uh, creating these cryptocurrencies and, and, and then bringing them out as technologies and hoping that people adopt it. We've very much gone from an adoption story into, into a mass adoption story. So at the moment, we're, we're, we're in a beta process, but beta to us really means we've got our product out, being tested and used by you know tens of thousands of people, mainly in Zimbabwe at the moment. We're ready to start our launch out in Cameroon and get the product out there as well. Um, and we're working with teams on the ground who are constantly testing it and getting, get, you know, getting our technology being used. Um, it's quite easy for us because there's a need, you know? So it's not like we're, we're creating technology in a laboratory and we hope that at some point, you know, someone's going to discover us and we're going to find it. And, you know, while that's happening, our tokens are going through the roof. Um, our, our tokens have a need, you know, they create liquidity for real people in real situations. Mm -hmm. Well, and explain how it works. Is, is this a payment, a peer-to-peer -peer payment system or what, how does it work exactly? So you so say, look, it's a, it's, a, it's, a pay, it's essentially a payment system. Okay. Um, it's for, for countries that lack uh, strong currency um, and require liquidity and have difficult interest rates. So a lot of what we do is we try to disintermediate uh, interest rates so that, you know, a farmer in Zimbabwe, you know, his interest rate can be as high as 10% a month, mm. which means that he can't grow anything. And so therefore he has a subsistence growing lifestyle. Mm. But if he's our token, then, then he can go and buy inputs at a reasonable price in a reasonable way. He can grow stuff. And then we help him, we help him sell it, and then he can do all that on on his uh, on his mobile wallet, and we create a mobile wallet scenario in which we obviously have our currency as well. So if you think about a wallet, payment gateway, things you can do, services that make it interesting, and stuff that's useful, but with a real thing about you know being able to cross borders and do cross border trade, create liquidity, buy things that they need, um, not be too depressed by inflation. Um, because we can work in, in a system that stands outside of the, the centralized economies. So decentralization is our story um, at its core. Well, and, and a couple of things I've heard about blockchain in Africa is that, first of all, it's a very young population. So they're kind of embracing new technologies. But then also they don't have these deeply entrenched financial systems like you would see in the U.S. or something. So they're kind of a little more nimble in terms of adapting this new technology. Brilliant. Is that what you're finding? Well, you, you, you know a lot, so I'm impressed by that. <laughs> I've done a few interviews, yeah. yeah. Well, that would be true. So, you know, when, when you look at even, let's say, older technologies, you know, of the sort of Web2 variety, things like payment gateways um, that were mobile money, mobile money was first adopted in Africa. It was first actually created, built, developed, through M-Pesa, which was a system in Kenya that grew to become, I think, 10 times bigger than the nearest bank and dwarfed everything else. It was some five to 10 years later that America adopted the same thing and mobile money became popular in America. So Africa was almost a decade ahead of, of America in that kind of adoption because there was no legacy groups trying to prevent it from happening. There were no banking system that was trying to block it. Um, and there was a genuine need. So when you're banking the unbanked, you can't say you can't have a bank. You, you, they'll take what they get and they'll use it. So this cryptocurrency is an incredibly useful tool. Mm -hmm. um, Bitcoin, if you look at Bitcoin trading, it's, it's bigger in Africa than it is anywhere in the world. You know, the only country that, that uh, trades Bitcoin more than Nigeria, for example, is the United States itself. So there's mm -hmm. more than China, France, Europe, whatever. It's an extraordinary statistic. Yeah. Now, is this also because so many mobile devices are around? So that technology has enabled this to happen as well? I think so. You know, there's never been a fixed line system. So you've never had, you know, people be using phones that were fixed. Um, there's always been this, you know, this sort of fluidity around the use of phones. Smartphone adoption has been very, very fast. Um, but we, we, we accept within that that not everyone has got a fast 
and fast system to 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 use smart technology. And so what we've created, um, you know, let's say 80% of the population in Africa now has a phone, um, a mobile device. Um, about half of those are still on what we call feature phones, which are the non-smart ones. And so what we've done is we've created this technology which uses what we call USSD, and it allows feature phones to actually be able to trade, use, uh, and store off, off chain, but store um, cryptocurrency and blockchain. It's no secret that I'm also president of a company called Tingo. Tingo Inc. has uh, 10 million customers in Nigeria and is a very successful uh, group working with farmers across the whole region. So we're going to be integrating a lot of what campaign is with those systems. That's the big hope. That's the expectation. And that's something you can rely on. Okay. Well, uh, please come back and give us an update when you kind of when you get all that going. That would be great to hear about it. Uh, you know, you knew about Africa. That was great. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Thank you so much. Okay.